What's a makerspace? Well, Grandpa Joe, these kids will tell you. Is a makerspace where you make stuff? Is it where we code Big Brother? Is it a place to conduct experiments? Okay, well, not exactly. Why don't you go ahead and read the definition for yourself? When I was a kid, we learned the three R's. Reading, writing, arithmetic. That was good enough for me back then. Well, Grandpa Joe, there's a lot of reasons we need a makerspace. Try to follow along. First, you need to know the world is rapidly changing. Jobs like cashiers and bank tellers are being automated. And the truth is, when our students graduate, the job fields will probably look very differently. The good news is we can predict some of the technology and skills we will need. And a makerspace is perfect to help us develop these skills. So that's why our libraries are changing. See if you can follow this analogy, Grandpa Joe. Libraries used to be like a grocery store. Yes, a grocery store. You'd come in and get the food or knowledge you needed, and then you'd simply leave. Now, we want to change that library experience. We want you to come in and see the library as a fancy kitchen, where you can create, explore, tinker, have fun, and have the correct tools and technology for you to be successful. So now you can see why and how we are changing. Well, what are the skills our kids need in the future? Well, we've done the research for you, and these are the skills that we're going to work on in the makerspace. There are seven, and I'm going to add one more to make eight. First, we want our makers to be curious and imaginative. Next, they need to be a skilled communicator. Thirdly, a maker is someone that takes risks, and when they fail, they get back up and try again. That's why we have a failure wall in our makerspace that we'll talk about later. Next, a maker must be a critical thinker and a problem solver. A maker should be a strong collaborator, which is why we encourage kids to work in teams in our makerspace. A maker needs to know where and how to access and analyze information. Good makers are flexible and adaptable. If I had to add one more, it would be task completion, or some people call it grit, or stick to it -iveness. Basically, it means when you start a task, you complete it, no matter how hard it is. Who designed this maker space? Well, Grandpa Joe, the students designed the space. We had students take a survey last year, and over 500 kids responded. This question was designed to see what kind of seating they wanted. We also got a lot of ideas from 7th graders in the Engineering Your World class. Lastly, we went and saw other maker spaces and did some online research as well. It was very important that we included the arts in our maker space, so we had some art classes make some mascots. Aren't they pretty cool? After looking at student surveys and research, we found out that kids wanted flexible seating, whether it was standing, sitting, or kneeling. We put wheels on all the furniture to make it even more flexible. What do you mean, flexible seating? When I was a kid, we sat in straight rows with wooden desks. The kids also wanted an interactive wall, where there would be a question of the week, a place to celebrate their failures, and a place to put some bright ideas. Students also wanted bright colors that were catchy and welcoming. I like rules. You gotta have rules. Otherwise, somebody's gonna lose an eye. Okay, Grandpa Joe. I'll bring in my friend Judge Judy to go over rules and expectations. Order! Order! This is my courtroom and these are my rules. Hey you! Sit down and shut your trap! You ain't the boss, Applesauce! Now listen here, these are my rules and expectations. The first three rules deal with respecting equipment and materials. Use the equipment safely and use protective gear. You don't want to chop off your phalanges. Use only what you need. Money doesn't grow on trees and these things are expensive. I'm not your mother. Pick up after yourself. Come on. The next three rules deal with respecting yourself and others. Don't be running around like an idiot. Come on, have a purpose. Don't be bugging the librarians about every little problem. You have a brain in your head, use it! Work in a team and be nice to one another. Come on, we're all human beings. What do you do to me if I break a rule? Well, if you break the rules, you will either get a yellow card or a red card. 
A yellow card means that you've done something minor. We may ask you to leave for the day, we may give you a verbal warning, or we may give you a written warning. If you get a written warning, you'll have to get a parent signature to return to the makerspace. A red card means that you've done something dangerous or very disrespectful, and you'll be asked to leave the makerspace and not come back for a while. So when can I even use this? And don't tell me late at night, because I'm not awake. Well, Grandpa Joe, the makerspace can be used in four different ways. The first is during class, if your teacher checks out the makerspace for a project. The second is a makerspace workshop, which is once a month after school. The third is the Chipotle challenge, which happens one week during lunch. The last is Maker Clubs, which happens two days before school and two days after school. All right, let's talk about each one of these. The first is pretty easy. Your teacher would simply check out the makerspace for you to work on an assignment during class. The second way you can use the makerspace is during one of the makerspace workshops. This is once or twice a month. We partner with the Rappahoe Public Library. You usually have to sign up before and it costs $1. To get announcements and reminders, download the School Info app on your phone. Scroll on the menu to My Alerts at the bottom. Once you've clicked this, find the Person icon on the bottom right hand corner of the screen. Find Mr. Phelan and enroll in the top two categories. Now you'll get announcements. We'd like to thank Arapaho Libraries for partnering with us for the Makerspace workshops. The third way to use the Makerspace is the Chipotle Challenge, which is a competition that happens about once a month. It can range from two days to an entire week. You work in teams of two or three in a low-tech challenge. Think paper airplanes or marshmallow towers. Every grade level will have one winning team will get a free burrito of their choice the very next day. We would like to thank Chipotle at the Bellevue Promenade for partnering with Campus Middle School for the Chipotle Challenge. All right, the fourth option is the most popular. This is the Maker Club. It's before school two days a week, Monday and Thursday from 8 a.m. to 8.40, after school two days a week, which is Tuesday and Wednesday from 3.45 to 4.40ish, and there are limited spots available. This is the time where you can play and experiment, you can perform challenges, and you can earn badges. Let's explain a little more now. What are you even supposed to do in this maker space? How does it even work? When you first enter Maker Club, go to the circulation desk, grab a lanyard, put it on. If there's none left, it means that we've reached capacity and sadly you'll have to come back another day. Now you're ready to get going. You can either experiment on your own or go to the challenge wall and shop for a challenge card. Look at the front to get the gist and the directions are on the back. Here are the six categories, multimedia production, engineering design and building, circuitry and electronics, arts and crafts, fashion design and merchandising, and robotics and coding. Notice the challenge wall is color-coded, so is the entire makerspace. Each challenge card is worth one point, and when you complete a challenge, you'll submit a picture or video to Schoology, which will keep track of your points. Once you've shown that you've submitted your completed challenge to Schoology, you'll get to ring the challenge completion bell. You'll also get a piece of candy. After you earn 10 points in one category, you'll get a bronze medal in that maker category. Over time, you can earn lots of different digital badges in all the maker categories. You'll see the badges on Schoology and on the School Info app under your ID. Remember in the School Info app, there is a My ID feature. You simply type your last name and then your student ID and then hit Find My ID. Then it will come up automatically. You'll see Chandler Smith here in just a second has earned a bronze in circuitry. So now maybe I'm a little interested. This could be fun, yeah. We knew you would come around, Grandpa Joe. Now let's cut to the Makerspace Olympics. Reporting live, I'm Carter Priest at the Makerspace Olympics here at Campus Middle School Stadium. In the next 60 seconds, I'm going to fill you in on all the action. We start the competition with the engineering, building, and design. 
What exactly is this contraption, and what are you designing? So it's a 3D printer, and I'm making these Bitcoins. So what a 3D printer does is it takes this plastic, it melts it, and then it makes a cool 3D design like this, or like these. That's unbelievable! He could win the gold with this design. Now we're here at the Arts and Crafts event. We have Avi and Chloe trying to dominate in the button making competition. It looks like Avi's having some trouble pulling the lever and Chloe is cheering him on. Come on, you're almost there. You got this. Come Look on. at that determination. <sighs> he has done it. Let's see if they have made the button. He Whoa. did. Remarkable. Let's jump over to circuitry and electronics. Let's check in and see what's going on. What are you making here? We are using making makeys to connect circuits and play the piano by using Play-Doh. Which it turns out is an effective conductor. We'll show you how it works. Fascinating! Maybe this is how Beethoven began his career. Now let's move to the multimedia event, where our competitors are using the green screen. It looks like they are surfing to the Olympic medal podium. Hang ten, ladies! Let's go to our final event. It's fashion and design. What are you ladies doing? We're using conductive thread in the sewing machine to attach to lights. Soon this fabric will light up. Well that sure sounds like a bright idea. We are wrapping up and we have a few more announcements. We want to make sure that everyone is included in our makerspace, regardless of your race, your background, gender, or anything else. Anyone can be a maker. Remember that our Makerspace opens on Monday, February 5th. We will have to close down for 1B1C at the end. And lastly, we have tons of people to thank. It's been a year in the making to make this Makerspace happen, so thank you to everyone.